Hi, this is Madison Pruitt and I've gone retired. This is the time of the year that we don't do so much traveling in our RVs, but instead we spend time preparing them for future travels. We make modifications, we make adjustments, we figure out what worked in the, the summer trips and what didn't work, and we prepare for future travels. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about some of the things that I've done to my RV since I got back from my Alaska trip. A lot of people have complained, a lot of Trimo, I mean not Trimo, a lot of Travato owners have complained that the uh, GF, G, GFCI, GFIC, I can't remember the exact combination, but that if they, uh, if they use their generator a lot, that, some, that quite frequently it will cause the uh, GFCI to pop. Now, that becomes a real pain because whenever you go into shore power, you want to be able to use electric mode of uh, Truma at least, and you probably want to power up your uh, laptops and things like that. There are two of there are two switches you have to do. One of them is fairly easy to get to, and one of them is a little more complicated. The one under the passenger seat is fairly easy to get to because it's just right here. However, the other one is underneath the other bed, and it is a pain to get to because you have to take the screws off of the panel. And it's this panel right here. This one. Well, someone suggested to me, I can't remember right now who it was. Uh, I'll be able to get the name. But someone suggested to me, that I might want to put magnets. And that makes it easy to get to the um, to the switch. You just simply pull this up and it's right there. And this one's really important because this is the one that controls the truma, that powers the truma. And if this one pops, then you're not going to be able to use electric power. You're going to get air statuses if you try to use the trimmer. I also got this before I left, but I didn't have time to put it in. And I'm going to put it in today. It's a drawer. Oh, I don't know why it's sticking. I just put some felt on it to try to hold it in place. But it's a drawer that can be used to hold your um, utensils, like so, you see. And uh, like I said, I had it, but I didn't have time to put it in before I left. I want to put it in right here. I do have a problem because this light right here is too far over. And you can see that with the light, it kind of runs into it. So I need to move this light over a bit. Now, to do that, this unscrews. It's not a normal puck light. It's just a, it's an LED, so it's just a strip. And it's got two screws here. And basically those screws come undone and we will slide it over just a little bit and they'll give me more space for the, uh, for the uh, under counter rack. Well, there's one minor problem and that is there's a small lip right here. So, that means I have to find something to pad the screws. Otherwise, I won't be able to open the, the drawer because it'll run into the lip. Well, I was able to uh, get it mounted, get the uh, drawer mounted. And 
comes out pretty nicely. That should give me several, you know, plenty of space for my uh, eating utensils. It's not quite the same color, but uh, it's close enough. I had to move the light back a bit, just like I said. Also, there's a lip right here. So I used liquid nails and put a thin strip of wood, uh, you know, on the back side, a very thin. It goes all the way across so that it would push the thing down just a little bit so it wouldn't catch on the lip. But I think it's going to work just fine. I'm going to put a bungee cord, I think, from the back to the front to hold it in place when I'm driving so it doesn't slide out. I'm thinking that that's what I'll do. Not sure. Well, before I did the Alaska trip, I put insulation in the uh, walls of my rig. There were several places that I put it. I put it next to the beds. I put it on the rear wall. And also I put it on the side wall. Now, I have read that some folks have been rather successful in just using uh, uh, rubberized undercoating and spraying that on the outside walls. And that that's worked pretty good to act both as a moisture barrier and as a uh, um, insulation. In fact, some people in the upper British Columbia, uh, in the northern part of upper British Columbia, that live in vans have done that, and it's it's worked fairly well for them in the in the depth of winter. So I thought, well, I'll get some of that rubberized uh, undercoating and maybe do my do my rig and then put the insulation on top of it. So I just took this off. I took this one off right here just to check on it on the side door because uh, when I was when I was going to Alaska, this area on the outside is where I tended to get the most snow on the running rail and ice would build up on the outside door. As a matter of fact, there were a couple of times I couldn't even open the door because the ice had built up so badly. So I just checked to see if I could uh, uh, sense any moisture had gotten in there by checking the insulation to see if it still was the same consistency as it was when I first got it, or if it looked like there might have gotten some water on it. And I feel pretty confident that it has held up just fine and that no moisture has formed. So on this side here, you can see that the insulation, the back side of the insulation looks just fine. It shows no sign of, of water having uh, formed on it. Same with the bottom one. No signs of water having formed on it. So, that being the case, I'm just going to put this right back in like I had it and just let it be. I just pulled out the insulation from under here, back here. You can see. Ah, there's still a little back there. And I'm going to use this professional grade rubberized undercoating to act as a moisture barrier. Also, I understand, I've seen on YouTube where this is a pretty good um, heat insulation also, uh, air insulation. So it should help. We'll see how this goes. And if it works okay, I'll uh, I'll let you guys know in a couple of months because I do have a road trip coming. Also, of course, it will cut down on the noise, the road noise in the rig. So we'll see. I'm going to put this on the inside, not underneath. Normally, it's used for undercoating underneath the car, but I'm going to use it inside next to the metal because that way it will act as a moisture barrier and I can put the insulation back on top of it. And that should give me a little bit more warmth. Well, here it is before I've gotten all the uh, 
insulation out that I had in there. I don't see any signs of a of mildew or rust, so I think it worked okay. But I'm still going to be putting up the uh, the rubberized uh, undercoating on the inside. Anyway, this one is before after I've gotten the insulation out, and then if I go to the other side. You can see what it looks like once I put it in. Just basically spray it in. I'll put a couple of coats on it um, to make sure it's uh, good and thick. Got to be careful not to get it into the mechanism because that would uh, make it difficult to uh, open and shut the door. That would be bad. So got to be careful not to get it in the mechanism. So I'll spray some up on the top just to show you what it's like. So up here is the top, and there's the spray. And just about of this can. So there's the uh, spot on the back door. You can see. I've got the uh, rubberized uh, undercoating on. And it's dried now. So I'm going to put in the uh, insulation back in. And this is the insulation that I'm going to be putting in. I've got some already cut up that I took out, and since I didn't see any evidence of mildew, then I'm going to uh, put it put as much of it back in. I think I can put more in now, uh, but we'll see how things go. I first need to get a cover for this rod right here. I don't want to get um, insulation caught in into that, so I do need to put a cover on that, but. Uh, otherwise, I'm ready to put the insulation in. First of all, I put this Reflectix to uh, shield this bar. And I'll put the uh, insulation on the back side of it. I'm just using the Reflectix because it's a good uh, shield. It's fairly stiff. And it should hold its form. As you can see, I... Uh, put some Reflectix so it would protect the latch up there just a bit. I don't want to get the insulation into the latch works. So um, once the seal is on, once the cover's on, that should hold it in place and should prevent any uh, insulation from getting into the works of the door. And there it is at the top. I'll put the cover on and then we'll be done, I think, for now. I'm going to do the beds probably tomorrow. Um, on both sides of the beds, there's insulation. Also, I got some black marks on this wall here, so I may have to paint it all. I've touched, done a little bit of a touch-up work already, but I don't know if it's going to show or not, so I may end up having to do that entire wall. Oh, well. Okay, this is the um, uh, bed behind the passenger seat with the top removed. I just removed it. Now, if you unscrew it, there's screws back here that you have to unscrew. Plus, there's three screws here on this side that have to be removed. Now, you can see the insulation that I put in uh, last year. And I'm going to remove all of this insulation because the wheel well is under here. And I want to put the uh, undercoating all around it to um, act as a moisture barrier because that's where the uh, uh, where the steel is, you know, the, uh, um, the wheel well. And it's metal exposed. And I want to cover that with a rock guard because that will act as a moisture barrier. 
Now, so far I haven't seen any evidence of any mildew or anything like that. But I don't want to risk it. I don't want to worry about it. And also putting the moisture barrier, the undercoating down there, will increase the, uh, uh, you know, the insulation factor. Now this in front, right here, this is the fresh water tank. It's on the inside. There's the, uh, the manual, um, uh, <laughs> intake. And here's the intake from the, uh, uh, you know, from the exterior, uh, from the uh, fill tank, from the fill uh, connector. Anyway, this is it. And I'm going to um, take out this insulation, put it in the rock guard, and then after it dries, I'll put the insulation in again. Also, I'll put more rock guard underneath here where I couldn't really get good insulation before but it it should spray up just fine so and here we are without the insulation behind it you can see the wheel um you know the wheel uh what do you call it the wheel base the wheel wheel well that's it the wheel well is bare now and there's no insulation behind the uh uh fresh water tank and of course, that's not good because uh, it means that the fresh water tank is exposed to um, the cold part of the, um, you know, when you're in cold weather, it's more exposed to coldness. And that's, that's not something you want. You want to try to keep your fresh water tank as warm as you can. So you need insulation back there. And I'm going to spray some rubberized um, underguard on the wheel well. It's pretty tight in here, so it's kind of hard to get too much in there. But I'm going to try to do some. I'm going to have to be careful and uh, not get any on the uh, the wires. These are all DC wires here. So I'm going to have to uh, wrap this in a uh, you know, I'm going to have to wrap this a little bit and try to keep this from getting any uh, undercoating on it. But I'm going to try to cover this as much as I can. It's about, it's it's pretty much outside temperature right now whenever I'm touching it. So it's chilly. We're having a sort of a cold, rainy day today. So anyway, that's that. I've got this wrapped around with a... Uh, plastic bags and there's two sides to the plastic bag so if any rubber should you know any of the rubber stuff should get on it it shouldn't cause any problem because it's dual you know it's two layers so if parts of it stick I don't really care I can just tear it off um, and that's that so I guess we're about ready to start spraying well just a little warning the um um, stuff that they use to uh, make the spray work, you know, the propellant, is a, um, it's similar to uh, propane, so the uh, propane alarm just went off and I had to air out the place a bit more. So if you do this on the inside, make sure that you uh, have very, very good insulation, ventil sorry, very, very good ventilation. I, uh, I'm doing it on a rainy day, so I had it, you know, I had the rig pretty much, uh, pretty much shut up all the windows and all that stuff. I just had to open everything up and air it out a little bit, and it's okay now. But <laughs> if you don't want that alarm to be going off, just be aware that that's what's going to happen, so be careful. Okay, <clears throat> this is the uh, side... Um, the bed, under the bed, on the driver's side. This right here, this white thing, that's the water filter. This is the um, tube for the uh, uh, for the drainage hole. There's your water pump. Um, tubing, most of the tubing in the uh, 
most of the water stuff in the uh, 59K is inside, so it's almost four season, except for the insulation. There's some insulation on this wall, and I'm not going to get behind it. I'll just leave that alone. Here's your Truma. Air vent for the Truma. Um, your ducts, all that stuff. And right here is your transfer switch. Uh, some people think that that might be causing the uh, GFCI switches to pop. I don't think it is. I think it's actually the generator. And right here's the wheel well. I put reflectance on top of the of the uh, insulation for the wheel well. So I'm debating whether I want to even bother messing with that or not. I tell you, I decided that since the uh, reflectance is on that so well, and it's holding it pretty well. I think the Reflectix will act as a moisture barrier, so I don't think I'm going to mess with this one. I couldn't really put the Reflectix on the other side because it just really wasn't space. But on this side, there's space, and the Reflectix is holding the insulation <coughs> fairly tight <coughs> so that I don't have to worry about it getting into the, uh, uh, to the Truma or any of the other equipment under here. I think I'm just going to let it stay as it is. I think it's okay.